Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are actually doing a request. So in one of my most recent videos, I asked if you wanted to see a video dedicated to helping you figure out your undertones and kind of figuring out how to wear makeup that complements you best, how to find out your right foundation match. So that is what we have here today. Thank you guys for requesting that video. I love bringing these to life. So I am going to be talking through every single step of the makeup application process. So it will be a tutorial and also in-depth explanation on how to pick the right shades and undertones for you in makeup. So this is not just about foundation and concealer, but we are gonna cover that, but also talking through blush, bronzer, highlight, and your lip color, and of course your eyeshadow. So it all goes together. There are things that you can do that will make your overall makeup look cohesive and help to enhance your natural beauty. And there are also things that you can do that can kind of just clash right away and not help you achieve that situation. So if you wanna see a tutorial on this look, if you wanna hear everything that I just talked about, we will jump right into that. Before we do, if you could please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That would help me out a lot. It would mean a lot to me. I'm uploading for you guys three to five times a week. It's been like five times a week lately, so you will always get at least three videos from me a week. And if you want to see more of my life behind the scenes, you want to keep up with me as far as workouts that I'm doing, recipes I'm creating, definitely go follow me on Instagram because I have a lot of extra content for you guys over there on my stories. So without further ado, let's get into it and let's talk undertones. I mean, it works, it's not cute, I don't care. Okay, so normally you guys know I prefer to go in with eyeshadow first to minimize any sort of fallout on the rest of my face makeup, but I wanna get rid of this white cast that I have going on from SPF. So I'm just gonna start off with foundation and I'm going to go in with my Lancome Tanti Doll Ultra Wear Foundation, my favorite high-end foundation of all time. And this is what I have in my bridal kit actually for my clients, so that's why I wanted to talk through this one because I can really show you the differences between warm and cool and neutral in undertones. So the shade I'm going to use is 370 Bisque Warm. Normally my shade when I'm self-tanned is 320, but I just ran out of it. So this is what I have available. I realized I posted that in a video recently saying this was my shade, but 320 is normally my shade. So this one is really close. And I'm going to apply this with the EIG Show Flat Kabuki Brush at number F614. So I do have self tanner on, like I said, and that really brings out the warm undertones in me. Most self tanners have a little bit of an orange tint to them. So even if you're somebody that normally has cool tone skin, it might make you look a little bit warmer than normal because of that orange tint. So let's go in with this. We can see here there's definitely a yellow tint to this foundation, kind of a goldenish yellow. Okay, so definitely a little bit more gold than my self tanner. That's usually why I prefer 320. I feel like it's just not as yellow, but it still is a warm toned shade. So that is what I like to do when I'm trying to find a good match for me is to match my foundation to my neck and not to my face. My face is always lighter than the rest of my body. It's always been that way, like even naturally in the sun. And when I was younger, if I had a tan, my face would always be like three to five shades lighter. I really don't know why it just has never held on to pig and I also never put self tanner on my face. I am very, very picky about what I allow to go onto my face and self tanner is no longer one of those things. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to break you out, but I have acne prone skin, sensitive skin, and it just comes off in a couple of days anyway. So there's really no point in me even putting it on my face to begin with. And I don't wanna mess with my skincare. So my face when I have self tanner on is definitely always lighter. And then you guys just saw like the palest of the pale because I had that white cast from that SPF. So if I had tried to match to my face, I would look ridiculous. I would be two different colors from my face to my body. So always try to match your foundation to your neck and not to your face if you want it to all look cohesive and be the same color. It's okay if your face is a little bit lighter, but you just, you know what I mean. You don't want it to be way, way lighter to where it's noticeable. So whenever people ask me how to find their correct shade at Sephora or Ulta when they're in the store, it's like, where do you even begin? It can feel really overwhelming to look at a full range of foundations when there are sometimes 40 plus options for shades. So 
So first what I would say is identify your complexion category or your skin tone. So not your undertone, but the actual color category of your skin. So are you fair? Are you light? Are you medium? Are you deep or are you dark? Most brands will have those different categories as your options for skin tone and your complexion. That's not going to be the exact same from brand to brand, but I have found that that's definitely the most common. Sometimes they will throw tan in there in between medium and deep, and sometimes you'll see a few others like porcelain or things like that, but those are kind of the main categories to look at when it comes to your actual skin tone. Then once you've identified that, so let's say when I'm self-tanned, I am medium, I can pick and choose different undertones within the medium category to test out. So if I'm looking at a range of medium foundations, I will see, or I should see if it's a brand with a really good range, within that medium category, they will have cool undertones, neutral undertones, and warm undertones. You may also see olive undertones, it depends. That's definitely not super common across brands, but that is another undertone to consider. So what I would do then, once you figured out if you're medium or light, is take a cool, a neutral, and a warm undertone foundation and swatch it on your neck and then see which one blends in, which one kind of disappears, and that's your correct shade. So I will show you guys swatches after we keep going with makeup, because I don't want my foundation to start to sink in weird, but that's essentially how you want to approach that. Okay, for concealer, I'm going to use my Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer, one of my all-time favorites. It probably is my all-time favorite. I have a few different shades here, so what I like to do when I have self-tanner on is take a mix of Natural Beige, which is one of their I would say like light to medium warm toned concealers with either vanilla or shortbread. Shortbread is definitely more yellow in undertone and vanilla leans a little bit more, it's like a mix between neutral and warm, honestly. So if you're really warm toned, shortbread may be perfect for you. If not, vanilla definitely works as well. So the reason I like to take a darker concealer and mix it with a lighter concealer is I just find that that gives me my most perfect concealer shade. When I'm self tanned, light concealers are too light Medium concealers are too dark, and a lot of the times I'm not able to find a good light to medium that matches my skin tone, so I just have to take a darker one mixed with a lighter one. If you can find one that you feel matches you perfectly, then go for it. And I know really bright under eyes used to be the thing a few years ago. I like a little bit of brightness under my eye area, but I don't want it to be so stark that when you take a flash photo, you look like you just have like white underneath your eyes. Do you know what I mean? So my concealer is definitely always a little bit lighter than my foundation, but not by a ton. I'm actually just gonna mix both of these so you guys can see the difference between shortbread and vanilla. I'll start by just doing one on each eye and then I'm gonna add more so they're even, of course. So this is shortbread. Do we see how yellow that is? So that is a warm undertone. And then this one is vanilla. So it still has a little bit of that peachy warmth, a little bit of that yellow undertone, but when you compare it to shortbread, it's more neutral than shortbread. All right, now I gotta make this even. Yeah, I put on way too much. This is for demonstration purposes only. To blend this out, I'm gonna take my Morphe M708 brush. I'm gonna really get to blending here because wow. So this is what I was talking about as being a little bit too light for my liking. This happened because I used too much of those lighter shades to show you guys the difference. So if I am in a situation where I feel like my concealer area is too light, I will pick up my foundation brush and just go over kind of like the bottom part of where I place that concealer to start to blend those together and darken it up a tiny bit. I won't go all the way up to underneath my lash line with it, but do you see what I mean? Like the edges of where I place that concealer and that really helps to balance it out and not make it so starkly bright. All right, for my under eye setting powder, I'm going to use my Makeup Revolution Luxury Baking Powder in Banana. I feel like I use this all the time, but it's so good for the under eye area. It actually works for the full face too. So this is a banana shade for, can we see this? 
my under eye powder and I really like that for the under eye area because it just helps to brighten it and also kind of offset any discoloration that you may have so if you have a lot of darkness under your eye area or really prominent veins then yellow kind of helps to cancel out that blue tint that you may have I also sometimes will just use a translucent powder but one of the two. So the brush I'm going to use for this is another EIG Show brush. This one I actually loved when I did my first impression review of this brand for you guys. I'll put a card for it here and link it below. I didn't really have a brush to use for the under eye area, so I was like, let's just try this, which normally would be a foundation brush, and I'm obsessed with the way that it just sinks powder into that under eye area. It's so pretty. I'm not going to powder the tops of my lids because I'm going in with eyeshadow, so I want that tack there for a primer. And then for the rest of my face, I am going to set with this Wet n Wild Photo Focus Powder. This is also in a banana shade, but because I'm warm toned, it doesn't look yellow on me. If you had cool toned skin or even neutral skin, this probably wouldn't work for you because it definitely is very yellow. I mean, it shears out to be more translucent than that once you apply it because you're not going in with a ton of course, but I would probably stay away, especially if you have cool toned skin. I'm gonna pick that up on my Sigma F30 and set my full face. I typically use translucent powder for setting, but sometimes if I'm using this one or my Maybelline Fit Me powder that has a little bit of a yellow tint too, then I will do that. But usually I want it to be as close to translucent as possible because I don't want to add additional coverage or mess up the color of my foundation. Okay, so I'm going to go in with some lighter shades from my freelance kit just because I really want you guys to be able to see the differences clearly. And if I pick some from the medium range, then they might blend into my skin too much. So let's start off with the cool foundation. This is the shade 220 Buff C. Also, I'm not going to rub it in all the way onto my arm because I really want you guys to be able to see. So this again is the shade 220 Buff C and on Lancome's site, it says this is for light skin with cool slash pink undertones. And right away, I can see that while yes, it's far too light for me, it also looks pink on my skin or like it has a pink tint to it. So that is a dead giveaway for me that this would not be the undertone for me because compared to the rest of my arm, which obviously is partially that way due to self tanner, the rest of my arm is much warmer and much more yellowy compared to this foundation. This looks very pink and this just would not be the undertone for me. So even if you can't really figure out if you're warm or cool or neutral, just putting foundations next to each other on their arm can be really helpful because that can help you start to see like okay that looks too pink that looks too yellow or whatever it may be okay next to that we have two sis 260 260 bisque and for neutral so on Lancome site this says this is for light to medium skin with neutral undertones so we can see here this is a good mix between something that's really pinky and something that is leaning more yellow. It's right in between. You can see compared to this one, which is cool toned, it definitely has more yellow in it, but on its own, you wouldn't necessarily say that that is a yellow undertoned foundation because it's not. So it doesn't look overtly yellow, but compared to this, we can start to see how that is leaning towards warmth more than this. And then the last shade we have is 270 Bisque W for warm. So this one on Lancome site says it's for light to medium skin with warm slash yellow undertones. So on its own, it definitely looks like it's a yellow undertone foundation because it is. Next to this, we can see it's definitely more yellow than that. And next to that, it is far more yellow. So is that kind of making sense, that gradient right there? Cool, neutral, warm. So I hope that that's helpful. Again, if you have olive undertones to your skin, you want to look for something that says it's for olive undertones. I know that foundation ranges do not always have an olive option, so it would probably be best for you to look for something more in the warm category or neutral to warm instead of cool. All right, next we're gonna go in with eyeshadow, and this is where I think it's really important to pay attention to undertones as well. I think a lot of people predominantly think about undertones when it comes to foundation and concealer and then just kind of leave it at that. But the way 
way that you can make your makeup look cohesive and really enhance your natural beauty is to use undertones that are similar across all of your different makeup categories. So if you have warm toned skin, going in with warm toned eyeshadows and blushes and lip colors is going to really, really enhance your natural skin tone. That doesn't mean, of course, that you can't use cool toned makeup, but if you're trying to just make everything look as cohesive as possible, using undertones that complement your skin tone is best, or at least that complement your other makeup categories. So making sure that you're trying to keep your eyes, your cheeks, and your lips all cool or all neutral or all warm. If you have a really warm toned eyeshadow look with a really cool toned lip, that can start to look like it's clashing and just look a little bit off. So this is my Morphe 350M palette, and this is predominantly a warm toned palette, but we have some other undertones mixed in here as well, so I feel like this is a good example to show you guys. So I will just swatch some of these shades quickly to show you the difference. Here we have our little gradient. I apologize that this one is definitely clearly a lot lighter than the others, but this was pretty much the only cool toned option in the palette. So we have cool, neutral, warm and olive. So let me quickly show you the shades that I used for those just for reference. So for the cool tone shadow, I used this one right here. For the neutral shadow, I used this one. For the warm tone shadow, I picked up this one. And then for the olive shadow, I used a mixture of this and this right here to get that cast that I was looking for. So we can see here, this one definitely compared to the others looks the most pink. This one is a good mixture between this, which is far more orange and truly warm and this, which is cool toned. And then this last one has that grayish greenish tint to it, which is what characterizes all of undertones. So I hope that you guys are able to see that clearly. So using all of these together, would look a bit off because they all are different undertones. So I think where you can kind of cross categories is neutral. So if you have cool toned skin or you're using cool toned shadows, you can also use neutral shadows and that will complement that look well. Same goes for warm tones and all of undertones. You can kind of mesh neutral in with it because it's neutral. So I am going to slap on some eyeshadow. We'll keep this look relatively simple just for the sake of time. All right, the first shade I am going to pick up is this one right here and I'm gonna pick that up on my Sigma E40 and just blend this all over the crease area. All right, next I'm gonna pick up my EIG Show blending brush E812, super similar to that Sigma brush, but a little bit smaller. Also, I forgot to say, if you guys are interested in purchasing EIG Show brushes, I do have a discount code. I think it's Abby15. I'll link it in the description box below. All right, next I'm gonna pick up this shade right here to start to build up the outer part of my crease. All right, next to build up some depth in that outer corner, I am going to pick up this shade right here on my EIG Show blending brush E811. Okay, and since that palette doesn't have any shimmers, I am going to go into this Makeup Revolution Color Book Story palette. This is a very warm toned palette. Are you seeing that? Super orangey. So for the shimmery shade on my lid, I'm gonna mix this with this. They both are just like warmer golden shades. This one is a little bit of a lighter white gold compared to this, which is more of a bronzy gold. I'm gonna pick that up on my EIG Show eyeshadow brush, the E828, and pick that up with my Milani Make It Last setting spray to really enhance that shimmer. All right, I'm just gonna pick up the previous brushes that I used to do a little bit of blending, and then that's essentially it for the eyeshadow. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this lighter white gold shade to pop into the innermost, did I pick up the right color? Yeah, the innermost part of my lid. And then that's it for shimmer, promise. All right, going back into the Morphe palette, I'm gonna pick this shade up right here to clean up under my brow bone area and also highlight. And for that, I'm gonna use my EIG Show eyeshadow brush E831. Right. 
All right, so that's it for the eye area. I went for a very warm toned eyeshadow look because I really wanted to show you guys what that looks like. So everything is in the warm category. All of the mattes that I used, all of the shimmers that I used had a slightly orangish to yellowish undertone to them or gold, of course, for the shimmers. Okay, next we have our bronzer category. I'm not gonna use any of these bronzers actually and that's because two of them are from my freelance kit and one is too cool toned for me. So here we have a warm toned bronzer. Oh, I did not, I didn't mean to blind you with that mirror. This bronzer definitely has an orangey undertone to it. Next, oh, and this is the Morphe Glamour Bronze Bronzer in the shade Icon. Then we have Benefit Hula next to it. Goodness, sorry. Benefit Hula leans more neutral slash leans more pink than this one right here, which is oranger. So can we see? Oranger, orangier, mm, more orange, I don't know can see right there. And then finally, we have Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer in the shade Medium slash Deep Matte. This one is cool toned, so can we see? I'm sorry, this is really hard because these are all different sizes. Warm toned, cool slash neutral, definitely cool toned. So you wanna make sure that you're picking a bronzer or if you still contour, picking a contour that matches your undertone because that's going to help to actually warm up the skin and not look like you have orange bronzer on or gray bronzer on. Okay, so I'm actually going to use my Undone Beauty Warm Up Bronzer Palette. So this is a four in one radiance palette with bronzer and highlight. I'm obsessing over this right now. The formulation is amazing once you get it blended out. Here again, we have a contrast between warm and cool. I mix these two together trying to get more of that warm tone shade and that actually works for me. They're just so small. I wish that they had them separately in their own palettes so that I could just use that. It works mixed together, but that is another clear contrast. And then to add some warmth to the nose area, I'm going to use my EIG Show No Shadow Brush E822. This fits perfectly into the crux of your nose. Why did I just say that? I'm just going to pick up this warmer shade right here for that and try to be really, really light with it because I'm not trying to contour. All right, next we have blush. So of course I have to show you guys with my Tarte blushes, favorite blush formulation of all time. They're Amazonian clay blush. Mm -hmm. So let me show you undertones here. All right, starting off with the warm toned blush right here. This definitely has a peachier warmth to it. This is the shade Sensual. Then the neutral blush we have Exposed right next to it. So compared to this, it definitely has more of that pink undertone to it on its own. It doesn't look like an intense pink blush. It's not too cool toned. Nice in the middle. And then we have, oh, did I say that that's Exposed? It's exposed. Dazzled right here, which obviously, I mean, these are just more neutral and more kind of, I don't wanna say flesh toned, but you know what I mean. These would match your actual skin tone better than something like this, which is definitely more of a pink blush, but we can also see compared to the others, the undertone is the most pinky purple. It's got that cooler tint to it. So I actually wanna try a totally different blush though because I just recently got some new blushes because all I use are these Tarte blushes. So I'm gonna pull that out. All right, and this is the Cream Shop or Creme Shop, I'm not sure. Mon Cherry Blush in Rosé Day. Oh, this is so good. This is a gorgeous warm toned pinkish brown. Oh my gosh. And I'm gonna apply that with my It Cosmetics blush brush. This is only my second time using this, but I was obsessed when I used it yesterday. Oh, what the heck? I love this blush, you guys. And I actually love how big this is. Like, yes, thank you. I'm gonna have to check out more shades. That is so, so pretty. I can't handle that. Okay, for highlighter, I actually have not used this Jaclyn Hill highlight palette in so long, but this has a good example of warm versus cool highlights. So right away we can tell this one has more of that yellowy undertone. This one has more of that pink undertone. So I find that for highlight, I can still get away with using pinkier undertones as long as they're not too pink and too dark, but I still prefer 
something with like a little bit of a hint of this in there. So I'm gonna mix these two together and we'll be able to see. I wanna see if you can tell swatched out. Pinkier, yellowier. I'm gonna use my Morphe M501 to lay that down. All right, for liner, I am going to use my Maybelline Lasting Drama Gel Liner in Blackest Black and use a combination of these EIG Show brushes. This is their Angled Eyeliner Brush E835. This is their Bent Eyeliner Brush E820. I told you guys this in that first impressions video as well. This combination is the best ever for gel liner. It is seriously amazing. The size of this angled brush is so perfect for creating wings, and this is amazing at getting in that inner corner and not messing up the rest of your eye makeup. So, love. All right, we are nearing the end of this video. I did apply my mascara off camera to save us time. I used my Benefit Bad Gal Bang Mascara, which is actually amazing, and my Maybelline at the Falsies Lash Lift for some extra fluffiness and volume. Okay, last, of course, we have lipstick, and I have three different Wet n Wild lipsticks here that I feel like show off the difference between these undertones really well. These are the Wet n Wild Mega Last Lip Colors in the High Shine formulation, and they also have a matte formulation. I recently did just do a swatch video on all of those shades so I will link that here and put it below if you're interested in that. Okay so clearly this is the warm toned lipstick. This is called Bellini Overflow. We can see it definitely is predominantly orange but I feel like this just really allows you guys to see kind of mixed with the makeup and everything together. This type of lip shade would complement this look well because it is orange toned. However it's a little bit neon for my liking on a day-to-day -day basis so I'm not going to wear this shade but this is the warm toned option. This is a cool toned option. It's called Mad for Mauve, and you can see it definitely has more of that purpley pink undertone to it. I love this shade. It's so beautiful. And this is the one area where I feel like I can kind of break the rules, if you will. Not that there are any rules in makeup, but I find that when I use a lip color that matches the undertone of my lips, that will be complimentary even if the rest of my makeup leans a little bit warmer. So this is the perfect example. The rest of my makeup is warm toned, but my natural lip color has kind of a purpley tint to it, so it still works with this look. So that's where when you are trying on different lipsticks and trying to figure out what looks best with a certain look, Yes, you can definitely use one that matches the rest of your face makeup or matches the undertone of your skin, but also look at the color of your lips naturally. Do they lean purpley? Do they lean more pink? And that can kind of help you to figure out what your perfect your lips but better lipstick is. So I know that's a little bit confusing because that kind of goes against everything that I've been saying so far, but lipstick is one of those areas where you can flex a little bit. So we saw that warm tone shade it definitely complemented this look well, but this specific shade still works on my face because it matches matches my lips better than that orange one does, of course. And finally, we have the neutral option. This is my favorite lipstick out of all of the lipsticks that I swatched from Wet n Wild. I am freaking obsessed, and of course, it's the one that I broke in that video. This is the shade Close Off, and it is perfection. So you can see, compared to the last shade, it's not as purpley, and of course, it's not as orangey as that first shade. It's in between, it's neutral. Oh my gosh, I love this lipstick so much. I've been wearing it nonstop lately. So this is the lipstick that we're gonna go for for the completed look and I don't even need a gloss with this because the formulation is just so shiny and gorgeous. All right, so here we have those lipsticks, warm, neutral, cool. All right, you guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope that this was helpful for you and also helped to answer the questions that you guys had when you requested this. This actually was super fun for me to put together and play around with all these different shades, so thank you for requesting this video. So that is everything I have to say. If you have any questions on anything that I talked about in this video or if there was something that I didn't mention that you were hoping I would mention, leave that in the comments below. I will get back to you ASAP, and if there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, feel free to leave that in the comments as well. I love putting up your guys's request. So my next video will be up in a few days. Until then, I hope you have a great few days.